Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Edelman. I'm the president of the Fort Lauderdale chapter of the American Board of Trial Advocates. With me today is longtime ABOTA member Mitch Chester. It is absolutely a pleasure to be doing this with you today, Mitch. Jeff, it's great to be with you too, and I appreciate your efforts in this, this very interesting project. Well, for those of you who don't know, um, Mitch and I have been working with the courts along with several other ABOTA members to keep Broward County courts and other South Florida courts open during this pandemic. Had we not been able to use Zoom these past four or five months, everything would have come to a grinding halt. And because we were able to convince the judiciary that this was a good system, we've been able to do a lot of things that probably should have been available prior to a pandemic, but we're still in the pandemic, so we're still kind of exploring those things. Mitch, I mean, you and I have been working on this from the beginning, what do you feel has been the most fascinating thing for throughout this process of keeping the courts open? Two dimensions to that. First, the velocity with which the judiciary has taken to the Zoom platform. Uh, this wouldn't have happened in another time. We tried many, many years ago, uh, but this was incredibly encouraging and motivational. The second part, which we'll get into is the acceptance by potential jurors of doing jury trials by Zoom in a way, in a manner of acceptance that I never expected until about a week and a half ago when Chief Judge Tudor had and Judge Henning had a jury selection with real jurors uh, for a mock voir dire to see how it would work. The attitudes of the judges and the jurors are incredibly satisfying in terms of where we can go next with this and what we can accomplish no matter what the odds are with COVID-19. COVID-19 or even if God forbid there were some type of catastrophic hurricane. Uh, these are things that can be used for many different reasons in South Florida as well as the rest of the country. But again, looking at that jury uh, selection that we had, I was really taken back by the positive feedback we got from the jurors. Do you want to talk about the process, about how we were able to get them to participate? Yeah, there was a, a coordinated effort by the, the chief judge's office, Judge Henning, uh, the clerk's office uh, with the jury management team, uh, and the information technology, judicial information technology office in the Broward uh, courthouse at the 17th Judicial Circuit. They all worked together very seamlessly to, to get uh, summonses out, real summonses by mail, with special instructions to look at a video that Judge Tudor had done uh, with regard to what this experiment was all about. And so the, the jurors read the summons, which was somewhat of a surprise because they complied quite well with it. We got a lot of jurors, much more than we thought we might get, given what's going on with COVID. And uh, it was, it was uh, a summons that said, you know, here's what we're gonna do. You can become acclimated, become oriented into what we're gonna do, then you'll sign on. You'll go through a process uh, where we ask you some technical questions that was done by Mr. Garcia, Orlando Garcia of the Judicial Information System. And uh, then Judge Henning uh, ushered everybody through the process where the real voir dire started. So the old way, the snail mail way of reaching out to the jurors, but incorporating more technological advances, surveys that were sent out, questionnaires, to help everybody get ready for the process of actually going through a voir dire. And so you mix the traditional with the new, and they had a real success. I think what really struck me was the fact that we're in front of our screens, 
we're talking to each other, but we're not in the same room. And I was worried about the jurors not taking it seriously. Did you feel in any way that they were not, that it was a less solemn experience than being in a courtroom? When you get a summons from the court and you actually sign on and you see a judge who is staring at you right through that camera and can see every facial expression and, and everything that they would need to assess you as a potential juror and hearing the answers and so forth, you don't get the impression that this is Mickey Mouse. This is quite serious. And the jurors responded in such a way that literally after it was over, they didn't want to get off the video. They didn't want to end the Zoom conference. They wanted to keep talking about it. They were so happy. I don't have to fight the traffic. I don't have to deal with the COVID or the mask. I can sit in the comfort of my home and I can focus on what was going on. So the, the, the grandeur uh, and the importance, the significance of being in a courtroom was still there. And I think the process amazingly was enhanced because they're closer to seeing the judges' faces, the lawyers' faces, and, and hearing what was said than they would be even in the courtroom. So it worked quite well. And I, I think the importance of jury duty, that civic duty, was magnified and supported by the Zoom process. And I'm not just well, saying that because I want it to work. I really believe that. I saw it. Well, we asked. We asked them, would you rather us put off jury trials until we're able to come into the courthouse or do it this way? Every single one of them said they preferred this way. Every yeah. single one. Uh, again, it was really very encouraging in a time where we're all looking for encouragement. Uh, but to see the kind of response that we had from people driving around, or maybe not driving around, sitting in their houses, used to be driving around because it's based on driver's licenses in Broward County. Right, right. But uh, people were really uh, receptive to it, which leads us to why we are doing this talk right now, because Right now, we are looking to do a jury trial by a Zoom in Broward County, the first one ever. And we're looking for attorneys that are willing to do it. Jeff, there's, there's no doubt in my mind, and Judge, Chief Judge Tudor has expressed uh, the same sentiment, that there's no reason why this cannot be a tremendous success for anybody that wants to step up to the plate and do it. Let me tell you why I say that. In the very beginning, we were concerned about the digital or the technological divide. Nobody had connectivity problems when we did the last uh, session. And nobody said that they didn't wanna look at a phone or a laptop or a desktop. There wasn't any kind of technological issue that caused a problem with regard to the participation of the jurors. And jury service at home, which is probably the safest public health uh, methodology we can use to do jury trials, worked spectacularly. So there's somebody out there, excuse the noise, I'm getting messages. I hope they're volunteers. We all can relate to that. Trials. But uh, there's somebody out there on the plaintiff side and the defense side that will understand that this is the new world. It's not just motion calendar. It's not just special sets. It's not just calendar calls or evidentiary hearings. Now you have the opportunity to create a historic uh, uh, result in Broward County to do a full jury trial with jurors at home where they don't come into the courthouse, they don't deal with the elevators, they don't deal with the risks of the bathrooms and so forth, and, and they can focus. And there are ways we can do this. So I'm very, very excited. This is something that, that can happen and will happen, the question is, who's gonna be first and second and third? Well, you know, I, I think another thing that really uh, intrigues me is when I go and pick a jury, I, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of people wanna get out of jury duty and will find any reason to get out, whether it be for work or, man, we all have work. And I, and I understand it is a hardship, but our government is based on jury service and other than serving in the military, there really is no other way that you can serve your country and serve 
and promote democracy in our country than by serving on a jury. And I felt like it opened up a lot more opportunity for people who might try to get off a of jury duty if they had to show up, but might tolerate it if they were able to do it in this format. Well, actually, what we learned from the last exercise was that you don't necessarily need a jury assembly room, that room where you put five, six, seven hundred people at the old Broward County, in the, in the Broward County, County uh, jury assembly area. You don't have to go through the long lines when you check in. You don't have to be waiting in line to go up to the 14th, 15th or 16th floor. You can eliminate all that with proper planning with, the, with this virtual jury trial. So that makes the system easier for the jurors to navigate and takes less time. So those things don't have to happen. So there are certain efficiencies and there's probably others we haven't discovered yet that are inherent in the virtual jury trial process. And that's why, I mean, I, I served on a jury once. I got to be four person. I thought it was the greatest experience I could have as a trial lawyer because I got to see it from the other side. And I can tell you that everybody I served with, and even in panels where I wasn't accepted over the years, they took it quite seriously. I don't see any diminishment of enthusiasm for doing the right thing uh, by jurors who do this through Zoom or some other video platform. Let me ask you this because uh, I'm sure that there are attorneys watching this who are concerned about, well, presenting an expert witness um, about sidebars. Let's talk about presenting testimony to start. Now, you could really just do it the way some people do with video, but I think the opportunity to actually have a doctor testify live from their office is also a cost-cutting measure. Would you agree? That's one of the efficiencies that, that makes total sense. Uh, the doctors don't have to travel. They don't have to wait uh, in, the, in the hallway to be called in. Uh, they can use visual aids as long as it is in coordination with the judge and the, and the lawyers. And they can do more. They can still serve as expert witnesses, but they can also maximize their time in the office when it's over instead of just driving back and forth. Uh, one of the things that we, we love the most about the virtual jury trial process is that you can have breakout rooms where you have these secure rooms. It's like, for those that remember the old show, Get Smart, it's like the cone of silence. Uh, but you, you go in these virtual rooms and the people that are not in the rooms cannot hear you. And it's secure communications. And as we know, uh, Zoom is doing more to encrypt uh, their, their platform than ever before. They spent 90 days studying it and they're actually doing it. And, and so you can, if you have a sidebar with a judge, the judge, the lawyers, the court reporter, if there's an interpreter necessary, uh, they can all, uh, if it's necessary to ask a witness a question in the sidebar, uh, there, there's ways to, to go into these virtual rooms. You push a button, you plan a little bit, you push a button, you're in there. When you're done, you come back in the main room, the, the jury hasn't heard you and you've still done the business of the court to advance the case. So uh, I like those rooms. They're very, very helpful. And it's the same kind of concept they use now in mediations when you break out in caucuses into these separate rooms. From some of these exercises, one of them I did the jury selection. Um, I know that uh, in the last one, it was uh, Dan Harwin, Brent Reitman, Reitman, Eric Rosen, and Anthony Quackenbush. Uh, one of the things that uh, we all kind of talked about it's nice to have your co-counsel with you, but I guess you could do that. You could be in the same place so that you can strategize and everything else. It's still better than being exposed to say 30 people in a courtroom as opposed to one person. Well, you can do that from separate locations and then communicate with each other through texting or emails. But there's a new development that just happened last week. And that is that Zoom is apparently, we're not getting any commission from Zoom, so I'm just excited Nothing. about the technology. <laughs> but there's a new development because they're coming out with a with a with basically a Zoom device. It's 27 inches wide 
And it's got apparently, from what I'm reading, three different cameras on it for wide angle. So if the lawyers that are working together wanted to be in the same room, that expands the view of the room. While one lawyer is doing one thing, the other one could be doing something else, like helping make notes about the voir dire process, uh, while the other one is actually, actually asking the questions. And that's what's so exciting about Zoom, because uh, you have a situation where we all have these cameras on these computers, our desktops, laptops, iPads, even the phones. And some people are starting to use, as you are, second cameras. And then there is document cameras that can be used. But with regard to this technology, and I haven't tested it yet because it's not out yet on the market. They're just taking pre-orders. But if, they, if this works the way they're advertising it, you could have people in the room still socially distanced, but still getting the job done. So some of the physical and the virtual barriers for teams, and I don't mean to say Microsoft teams, but I just did, some of the physical barriers might be eliminated by that type of, uh, that type of technology. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I think that my biggest concern, and I'm sure the concern for a lot of trial lawyers is the loss of the grandeur of being in a courtroom. And it can't be denied, some of that is not there. But I felt that when we were talking to those jurors, and again, they stuck around for like an extra hour that the judge said that they could leave whenever they wanted. They stuck around. They did not feel that it was any less serious. And I thought that that was really remarkable and really encouraging for me. Jeff, we've been working on, on motion calendars and special sets and all this video stuff for months. And, and Jack Tudor, Judge Tudor, Chief Judge, said, you know, we're going to take this incrementally. And what happened was I, I likened it to the uh, Mercury program. We started out at the Mercury level. We graduated to the Gemini level. Now we're at the Apollo level. We're just waiting to make a landing with the first trial. Mm -hmm. But we learned different things in there, in, in that process, that helped us impart to the jurors how serious this was. And instead of dismissing it as just a, an experiment with cameras and video technology, they were really into it. This was a cross section of society. There were people that you might see in any potential jury pool. They were, they were coming up with ideas, questions, and suggestions that if, if for all the months that we've been working on this, the judges, the, the IT uh, uh, gentleman, uh, Mr. Garcia, uh, you and I, and, and, and all the other lawyers that have been involved in this, that we never thought about. So they came up with new things. And that told me that they really, really cared and they understood the gravity of being in court and the opportunity to do this. So it's that enthusiasm, that dynamic that can be used if, if people start doing jury trials. I was really taken back by, uh, I'm sure you remember this, Mitch, uh, the lady who was a, uh, a CNA, she was a nurse. And she says, yeah, I got off of work, you know, in the morning, but, had this been in court, I couldn't have gone, but I'm thrilled to be able to participate in this. And uh, she was very sincere. And uh, that's an example of somebody who, again, um, our, we're in 2020 and some of our technology, some of, the, well, some of our use of technology is back about 20 years. And the law is a lot of times very slow to catch up. But they've just, they've had, you know, we had to. We had to do these things. If we didn't do it, we've had probably about 20,000 hearings by now in Broward County. If we didn't do that, can you imagine not having jury trials and not having access to courts, even for hearings, for smaller matters involving cases? You're absolutely correct. The, the situation is, is this, as lawyers, you know, we went to law school, we learned the law, and we took the bar and we learned what it was like to practice. And we were taught in traditional, yet old school ways, the pace of change in our in our profession, accelerated with e filing. 
accelerated with the uh, extensions of filing times deadlines with, with regard to you can do it at midnight, midnight now. All the technology has increased the velocity of our profession. But now lawyers have an opportunity to, to embrace technology like never before. When the Florida Bar said you need technology credits, they were way ahead, way ahead because they maybe they didn't know about COVID, but they knew that technology would advance, the speed with which it's advanced we've addressed. But that means that there's an opportunity now for lawyers to learn how to deal with effective presentations on Zoom, how to do virtual presentations, working with exhibits, working with different uh, presentation styles, because you're sitting basically in a room where other people are sitting in their own rooms. It's totally different. We've embraced challenges in the past like e-filing, and we can embrace this. This is not hard. I did my first non-jury a couple of weeks ago or a week and a half ago. Uh, and once I figured out what to do with the exhibits, I felt so comfortable. But I want to tell you one more quick story. We had a hearing with a judge I've never seen before up in Tallahassee. Never got a chance to be in his honor's courtroom. I, over the four and a half hours of that hearing, I understood the value of being able to see, to have that eye contact that I wouldn't necessarily have if I was sitting 20 or standing 20 feet away or 15 feet away. My opponents, uh, I had a co-counsel, we were video. My opponents did it all by audio. And at the end of that process, we realized that there was a connection made by Zoom, by this video technology. It's the same connection that witnesses can have, lawyers can have, judges can have, and jurors can have. This is a dynamic process. You hear about Zoom fatigue. I don't get that Zoom fatigue because I get to actually see people's names. It's easier to remember. I get to, I get to uh, uh, interact with people and see facial expressions or when they're about to talk that I couldn't necessarily see if I was standing at a podium 10 or 15 feet away from the jury. So we have the opportunities here to, to level up, to, to reach out and create a dynamic in jury trials that we never even thought possible just four months ago, five months ago. Well, when I did the, one of the jury selection exercises, you remember I switched cameras and I used a podium. But I also had a larger screen and I could see all the tiles of all the different jurors up on the screen with their names. I really did feel like I was right in front of them. And it, you know, I kind of like just went into trial lawyer mode, just like I normally would, even though it was not a real case. Um, you know, I felt it. And I think that that's really, really important that people understand that while it's different, it doesn't mean that it's bad. And right now, we need somebody to volunteer for this. Judge Tudor has asked us to find a case to do in September. So if you're watching this or you're listening to this, you need to contact us. You need to contact Aboda. You can get in touch with me at jeff at edelmanlawyers.com, A-D-E-L-M-A-N, lawyers.com. My cell number is 954-478-1997. I want to hear from you. We need to get a pair of a defense attorney and a plaintiff's attorney that's willing to do this. And the truth is, if you've got a case that's ripe to, to get resolved, uh, you're not looking at an in-person jury trial probably for at least a year. And Who's to say that it will be a civil jury trial? It probably will be criminal trials getting it first. In fact, almost definitely will be criminal uh, trials first. So, I mean, this is a real opportunity to move one of your cases and to really be a pioneer in Broward County. And I'm, I'm hoping that we hear from a lot of people after watching or listening to this that want to participate because this is the way of the future. You may not like it, but we don't have a choice. And the truth of the matter is, I don't think it's that bad. 
It is, and you have a responsibility. We all have responsibility to our respective clients. Nobody wants to be stuck in the legal system too long. Look, today they came out, today's July 20th, they came out with this Oxford University study about uh, a vaccine that looks promising. We don't know how long it'll take to become distributed. So this is our reality now, and we've got to do what we can. But speaking about resources, our Aboda website, abodaftl.org, has a lot of this information on it. We're going to be posting more, uh, not only from our local chapter, but also from the court. And we're also going to be posting, hopefully, some information from national Aboda and some resource materials. And we're trying to keep the site up to date. And, and you can see some of the earlier work and experiments with this. So abotaftl.org is is a resource for you and i'm available to to answer any questions i love being in the courtroom and i want to go back in the courtroom but i can tell you after my non-jury trial and after watching the work of those excellent lawyers that did what they did uh, in the last session with judge henning i'm just as excited if not more right now about doing a jury trial virtually uh, through the zoom process well, Mitch, I, I really appreciate you coming on with me today to do this. I mean, you've been my teammate throughout this COVID-19 experience, and I couldn't do a lot of the things that I've done uh, without your persistence, without your willingness to do it. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, I'm just so forever indebted that uh, you and I were paired together to, to do this. And it's kind of funny how uh, 18 years later we are doing this after I had one of my first cases with you uh, in 2002, 2003. Who knew this is where we were going to be? Well, Jeff, you have brought the Aboda chapter up to speed. You've met the challenge under your leadership and, and at a, a perfect opportunity. You were sworn in in January and then all of a sudden here comes COVID. And so uh, thank you for your, your leadership and your insight. And you've got a lot more to do. You've got much more to do. We all do. That means that we all should be giving serious consideration both on the plaintiff side and on the defense side to embracing this technology, becoming the nation's leader in virtual jury trials until we can go back in the courtroom when it's safe. But with the public health threats that COVID presents right now, this is the opportunity to really stand out and to make history. I hope you all will consider it quite seriously. Again, if you'd like to get in touch with me about trying your, your case, Jeff at edelmanlawyers.com. You can always go to the Aboda website, A-B-O-T-A-F-T-L.org. Uh, I will leave you, Mitch, I'm sure you will appreciate this. Uh, this has been a very difficult, emotional time for all of us. We have had to change our lives. We have had to deal with the fact that we are not going to be going back to a lot of the things that uh, we have uh, always done, uh, whether it be in law or anything else. But I've been, I do a lot of reading, as you know, and uh, I found this quote by uh, the late John Lewis, do not get lost in a sea of despair. Be hopeful, be optimistic. And we need to stay up. We need to keep going. Justice requires it and our clients need us. Mitch. He met the challenges of his time and now it's up to us to meet the challenges of our time in the legal profession. And the we will. The virus is not gonna stop justice in Broward County or anywhere in the country. So let's build on the progress that Chief Judge Tudor has made and the other judges. I know we have a bright future. We can start moving cases through this process. Thank you to all of you who've watched or listened. And again, please reach out to us and be well. Thank you, Jeff.